I hope everybody had their lunch and everybody is refueled and energ energized. So the topic is getting your designer ready for Gutenberg. So I'm Rahi Prajapati. Uh, I currently work as an engineering manager at Articamp. Uh, I have been working with WordPress for more than three years now. And Gutenberg and full site editing initiative are definitely one of my favorites about WordPress. So it, by the way, uh, if you are referring to full site editing as a site editor, uh, which is the latest update from WordPress, like WordPress rebranded full site editing as site editor. So I'm, uh, I have picked up this habit of, uh, uh, habit of using full site editing instead of site editor. So yeah, please bear with me about that. All right, so that was all about me. Uh, now I will talk about how this talk will help you. Right, so first we'll set the agenda for this today's talk. Uh, so how will this talk be helpful for you? Uh, one of the questions you might have about this talk is, is this only relevant for the designers? Right, so the answer is no. Uh, even if you are somebody who is involved in, uh, in, the, in the decision making for any of the designs or design related processes of your website, then this will be relevant for you. So we'll basically talk about how, uh, how consider considerations of a few things during the design phase of a website can help you significantly lower the efforts during the, during the execution or implementation of the design. So second question you might have is, if it's about Gutenberg, uh, is it only relevant for the block themes or does it apply to traditional themes as well? So if you, are, if you don't know about block themes, uh, block themes are the themes which work with full site editing or that enable full site editing. So the answer to that will be uh, partially yes, because even in traditional themes, there will be landing pages uh, that are completely built with Gutenberg. So it applies to the, tra it applies to the traditional themes as well. Uh, do we have any designers here? Okay, one, two. Okay, many folks. <laughs> okay. So, these are some of the related uh, Gutenberg concepts that we'll, that, that, that we'll talk about because these are the concepts that can help you lower the efforts during the estimations. Uh, sorry, during the implementation. So, Compot uh, sorry, block styles, block variations, block patterns, and block controls. So Gutenberg is based on React framework, and React is a component-based framework. So everything is uh, everything in Gutenberg is also component. So about this block styles, right? So if you know about block styles, uh, block styles basically enable you to change the visuals of a block without really making any markup changes, right? So while designing, you could think about something. Uh, if, if, there is a, if there is a section that can be reused without making many markup changes and only applying the visual changes, then block styles would be the, would be, would be the relevant concept for that one. Then we have uh, block variations. Block variations basically allow you to have different functionalities, but the visuals remain the same, right? So in the, in the uh, next upcoming slides, we will talk about practical examples uh, of, of such uh, designs where these concepts apply. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, I have two designs here. On the left, both are for testimonial section. On the left, uh, the testimonial section is kind of a slider. And on the right, we have the static text. Uh, the testimonial is basically divided into three columns. Right, so if you were to design a website where you were going to uh, add this testimonial section on a website, so this is something uh, if you were to develop in Gutenberg, 
you will have to end up creating two different custom blocks for the same section because it's very difficult to achieve the same functionality using concepts like block styles or block, uh, block variations. So that's something that can be avoided. So in this same examples, uh, we have a few designers here. Uh, in, in, the designs, uh, in the design tools, there is a concept of layers, right? And in this Gutenberg, we have this concept of hierarchy, like nesting, nesting of different blocks. So if you could, if you were able to map that layers with, uh, with the nesting of Gutenberg blocks, then you would be better be able to understand like which are the sections you could design uh, that will directly fit into the Gutenberg editor without requiring, uh, without requiring any custom development work. <coughs> Right, so we'll talk about uh, one more example. So on the left side, uh, this is the hero section of a website. So on the left side, uh, as you can see, we have two images which are overflowing the section. And on the right side, it's a, it's a, pretty, simple, it's a pretty simple design. On the right side, we have the uh, heading, we have paragraph, then two images, and on the right side, we have image. So this can be uh, achieved without requiring, uh, requiring any custom Gutenberg development work. Whereas on the left side, uh, that's not really possible. So if you were thinking uh, that Gutenberg 6. Point, sorry, WordPress 6.1 introduced uh, the spacing controls. So you could maybe specify a negative margin. So I had tested that out already and it's not really possible to specify negative margins. Right, so you will again end up uh, doing some custom development work. So what we are talking about here is not going against any custom development work because WordPress wouldn't be WordPress if it wasn't being customized, right? It's, it's known for its customizability both for the user and for the developers. But we are trying to just reduce the efforts uh, wherever possible uh, during the design phase itself and just, just because of these minor considerations, you could have significant uh, development efforts reduced during the development phase. Yeah, so if you are a, uh, if you are a designer and you're looking to show your, show your design or your creativity through Gutenberg, this is something, a very interesting initiative, Museum of Block Art. So you could visit this website and what you could do is you can think of an art and then try to reproduce or recreate that using Gutenberg blocks. So what you're seeing here is there are three arts. Now all three of these are creating, uh, created using, using Gutenberg blocks and that to using only core blocks, right? So try, try and show your creativity and in, in this process you will also learn about Gutenberg, like how, uh, how a user uses the Gutenberg editor and that will also like help you better design things uh, so that it fits well during the de uh, development phase. And by the way, like uh, even if you at, the, at first it feels like it's not really possible to achieve a design in Gutenberg uh, using Gutenberg blocks, like who would have thought about this Mario character, right? The second character, Mario, is created using only two blocks, the group block and the buttons block, right? So I was very surprised when I first saw this. So definitely visit out, uh, visit that website and check out the arts they have. And you will also get to like learn about how you can utilize the blocks and uh, how you can uh, better create designs. Yeah, uh, if anybody, if anybody has any questions, please, just please. Just okay. back, like, the Mario, you said it's only two blocks. Yeah, right. right. Multiple instances of those two blocks, right? Right. Just clarify that. Yes, yes. So it, it's a very complex nesting they have used. Like, it's not very practical. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah that, uh, like, that's how these arts are created. But it's, it's very amusing if you like see how they have exactly created. But once you visit this art, you'll also like see below the exact markup of the, the block markup uh, that has been used to create this uh, art. 
And what you could do is you could also like copy paste the markup inside inside the editor and check it out yourself, like which are the exact blocks that have been used and how they have been used. Yes, uh, any other questions? Yeah, sure. So the question is uh, what exactly are block patterns in Gutenberg, right? Right, and block controls. So block patterns in Gutenberg are a group of blocks. Basically you group already created blocks and then that group of blocks uh, or predefined sequence of blocks is usable to the uh, usable to the user in the editor right for example you could create a block pattern that contains an image a button block and then you could uh, once the user uh, visits the block editor they will have that block pattern and once they uh, once they add that uh, block pattern, they, uh, that blocks uh, that are there, like the image block and button block, they will be automatically inserted. Yeah. It's basically predefining uh, a set of blocks that are reusable for the user. Thank you so much for joining. And yeah, have a great day. <laughs>